If you struggle with perfectionism or procrastination, you're in the right place, because I struggle too. Heck, it's taken me four hours just to start shooting this video. So you best believe I know about procrastination and perfectionism. We're gonna talk about that, and I'm gonna give you five tips on how I think you can beat both those nasty little things. Coming up. Welcome back, my name is Jack, thanks for tuning in. Today we're talking about two of my least favorite things, and that's perfectionism and procrastination. My whole life I've struggled with those two things and they've affected me a lot with my music and my creative goals and have really drained the energy and the self-confidence in a lot of ways. So in this video, I'm gonna share five tips on how I think you can start breaking the chains of perfectionism and procrastination to start being as creative as possible and achieving the creative dreams and goals that you have in your heart. So if you're just tuning in for the first time, welcome and thanks for watching. It's my goal to help creative music makers get better at making music at home. If you've been here before, please do consider subscribing or liking and commenting below. Your support really does mean the world. The first tip for beating perfectionism and procrastination is to just start. And I know that might sound obvious, but there's some truth to it. I've found personally that when I sit down and I start putting in the work, I find that a lot of the times the things I'm afraid of or the barriers I think I'll hit really aren't as hard or big of a problem as I think they'll be. Definitely tip number one is just to start. Do what you can. Start creating. Start making music. In this instance, I started shooting this video. Don't be too hard on yourself. Don't expect something amazing right off the bat. Just sit down, start working, and the rest will pick up from there. The next tip we have is going to be tip number two, and that is going to be to create smaller goals that are less overwhelming that you can achieve in a shorter period of time. And this is important for two reasons. One, you want to make sure you're breaking down your projects so you actually have direction and know what to work towards. And two, allowing yourself to celebrate small wins and small victories by setting those smaller goals will really give you a chance to grow confidence, feel better about the project, and see that you actually are making progress and progressing over time. The opposite of this would be to set one large project, like I'm gonna release a five song record. And then you sit down and you're working towards that five song record and in your mind, you've only succeeded when you reach the end of that five song record. Now, of course, that's gonna take a long time. There's gonna be a lot of things that go into that and it might feel overwhelming. But if you sit down and you say, well, my goal in this first week is to map out five songs. Now, I don't have to worry about the harmonic or melodic content, but maybe just the song structure, but some kind of written map, and then you work towards that, and then once you're done with that week, you can sit down and see that there's been progress made the following week, when you actually maybe start picking chord progressions or starting writing, and then you've got a new set of smaller goals to focus on. I really do feel like it makes things less overwhelming. We're gonna move on to tip number three, and that is to set time limits or deadlines for your creative projects. Now, a lot of times when you're working on creative projects, especially those that are just for your Yourself, the inclination can be to give yourself a long period of time without a deadline to really just feel the project out, take as much time as you need and work through it. But I find that actually tends to make me less creative and makes me more likely to procrastinate and fall victim to perfectionism. And the reason for that is that I've found that if you give yourself four months for a project, you're gonna take four months. Whereas if you give yourself two months, you'll take two months. You might only need one month to complete the project, but if you give yourself two or four, our mind slows down, our need to work harder reduces, we get a little more comfortable and we tend to expand the project to fit that length of time. And in a lot of ways, having more time really doesn't actually make things better. It gives you more time to question yourself, more time to doubt, more time to come up with problems that maybe wouldn't even exist if you just went for it and went quick. So I do really recommend giving yourself a fair set of time, nothing too long, and really doing the best you can within that given amount of time. Set a deadline that's just slightly under what you think would be comfortable and work towards that. Now this tip number four is something that I've struggled with a lot and I catch myself doing and I have to really be proactive about reminding myself not to do. And that is when you're beginning a project, when you're starting a career as an artist or a creative person, do yourself a big favor and don't compare your beginning to someone else's middle or end. It's so easy to go on Instagram or social media or watch the TV or consume the art of those that we admire and think, wow, I'll never be like them. I'll never be good enough. You can listen to my songs versus theirs or look at their art versus mine and feel completely overwhelmed and feel like you're no good. I did this completely growing up. I, I did know a lot and it really set me back because of course it makes no sense to assume that you would be as good as someone who's put thousands of hours into something. You know, Malcolm Gladwell says that we need 10,000 hours to achieve mastery. Well, that person could be well beyond 10,000 hours even if you've only just heard of them. You don't know what their progress was like. A lot of times people who succeed have spent thousands of hours of work before you even hear about them. So don't forget that and give yourself a fair chance and a fair amount of time to work towards your goals, get better and progress before comparing yourself 
yourself to others. Hey, if you're enjoying this list, please do me a solid and remember to hit that subscribe. All right, now my fifth and final tip is don't sweat over the small things, especially at the beginning. I've found in my own creativity that a lot of times I'll spend a ton of time worrying about the minor details at the beginning of a creative project, and I end up stifling my creative growth throughout that project. And the reason for it is when you first start working on a project, there tends to be more of a creative flow, more of a creative state where you just sit down, let your creativity run, and this tends to be the time in the project where the most progress is made, right at the beginning. And for me, what'll happen is I'll focus so much on tiny details along the way that I actually end up killing the progress, slowing myself down, and getting stuck. And I find that this leads to a drastic number of projects that I never complete just because I don't allow myself to express creativity first, then come back with a logical, critical, detail-oriented mind to pick things apart and fine-tune the small details. There's always time to go back and make those corrections, so don't feel like you have to do it right away. But definitely, if you can, make sure you set your creative time apart from your editing time. Question of the day, what are some things that you've struggled with creatively? Has it been procrastination or perfectionism? And what have you done to combat those negative mindsets let me know in the comments below well that's all i've got for this one but i hope you enjoyed the video if you did please like comment and subscribe your support means the world do let me know what video you'd like to see next i'm trying to think of ideas but until i get more feedback from my viewers it's going to be hard to navigate those waters so any feedback is really super important and it does mean the world every subscriber matters to me so if you got a chance and you liked this video and you want to be updated for more please subscribe and turn on that notification icon and i would look forward to seeing you in the next upload thanks again so much. Have a great rest of your day. See you later.